Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm very excited to be talking about one of the most anticipated mice we've seen this year. Today we're going to be talking about the Ninjutsu Sora V2. Now I've been wanting to look at Ninjutsu's mice for quite a while. I really wanted to get my hands on the Sora V1. Unfortunately, I was just never able to get my hands on units. But Ninjutsu was kind enough to send out a Sora V2 for me to take a look at. So thank you very much to them. I greatly appreciate it. I'm very, very excited to see what the Sora is all about. And today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing and first impressions. I will have a full, much more in-depth video on the Sora V2 out in a month or so after this video goes live once I have the time to do some more testing. Now, in terms of the box experience, the box feels really nice, very premium looking. I love the actual kind of aesthetic they've gone for this. It looks really nice. To unbox it, we're just going to go ahead and pull this tab, and that's going to reveal a second box on the inside. This reminds me so much of like the old Samsung phones unboxing. Like, I swear Samsung had the exact same kind of box layout. But anyways, I do really like the boxes here. Again, it feels very premium, very eye-catching, very nice. Pull this off, and there we go. Now, one thing right off the top I did notice here is that just like with Sprime PM1, there is a little bit of foam at the top of this box, but there's no puck to hold the mouse in place. So the mouse can bump around during shipping. Now, obviously this packaging is a lot different than the packaging we saw on the, on the Sprime PM1. So this mouse had, has a very low chance of getting damaged. It's a pretty minimal thing, but it would be nice to see just a puck here just to hold it in, to, in place. Like we saw with the Pulsar mice, this little piece of foam at the top really isn't gonna do a lot. So that would be one thing I would like to see improved with the packaging, but it's a very minimal thing. Now inside the packaging, we have the Sora V2 itself in this kind of little Little plastic wrapper so here we have the Sora v2 we'll talk about that in a second and we have some accessories here at the bottom all right now it included in this little accessories box we have a oh, we have a lot of things okay we got a lot in here okay so first off we have a little user manual now i believe this mouse is almost completely web-based um so this is makes sense there's not gonna be too much here for your user manual so that's pretty self-explanatory there so we have the usb a dongle and now i will say this dongle does have a little bit of rubber on the bottom to prevent it from slipping on your desk which is nice to see for some reason a lot of recent companies don't have rubber on the bottom so that is very nice to see there we have a usb a to usb c cable with the Nijutsu branding on it now one thing this cable is not tilted which is rather unfortunate to see i really did like the tilt that was on the pulsar mice again this is a wireless mouse so it's not a super big problem but it would have been nice to see a tilt here now one thing i did want to check because this usb-c cable does look a little different from a traditional one let me just go ahead and grab a cable here so this is one thing i was a little worried about because i noticed this with the sprime so unfortunately it looks like they have made themselves a custom sized usb-c cable now this is similar to what rapu did however rapu intentionally put ramps on the inside of the usb-c cable i think this was another reason reason but yes as you can see here regular USB-C cables will not fit with this which is very unfortunate to see that's very frustrating I really would have rather see them kind of widen this a little bit because being stuck using their own cable is rather frustrating to see especially this is a universal connector so that is right off the top something I would really like to see changed there's really no reason to make this a specific size I don't understand why people have been doing this this again is because both the Sprime and the Sora are made in the same factory both of them have this problem which is very unfortunate to see hopefully Nijutsu will fix that on future versions and just widen this a little bit so you can actually use other types of cables and not be stuck with their own version of their cable because that is very frustrating alrighty and then another thing we have in Included is a bunch of stickers which is really nice to see they have a really nice hollow on them these remind me of those like counter-strike hollow stickers I actually really like the look of these these are really clean so that's really nice to see included now one of the most unique things about the Sora that I don't know if it's intentional but I actually really do like this there are actually no skates pre-installed on the bottom of the Sora v2 now I actually really really like this because we've seen a recent trend where a lot of companies are including both a control set of stock skates and a speed version of the stock skates and having the user basically choose what version they want to put on their mouse it's a really nice thing to see because again if you put on one set everyone's not going to like a specific set so it's nice to see like oh if you have if you like control skates and it has the speed skates on it you have to remove the speed skates to put the control skates on you're wasting a bunch of skates and just making more e-waste so that is nice to see to cut down on wasted plastic and that kind of stuff just having them off by default is actually a really good thing i actually would like to see this be a permanent thing again i don't know if this is something unique to just this version like again i have a pre-batch so i'm not sure if this is something unique to my unit but i actually really do like to see this now one thing i will say that i'm not too keen on is that there are no skate removal ramps on the bottom of the sora which is very unfortunate to see i would be really nice to see a small little ramp here and a very very tiny ramp a little here just something to make removing the skates a little 
little easier. Again, there are no skates on by default, so it's not that big of an issue, but that would be nice to see some kind of ramp on the bottom to remove skates. That is something that's very unfortunate to not see here on the Sora V2. All right, well, that's everything for what's included with the Sora V2. Let's go ahead and talk about the mouse next. Alrighty, now one big reason why the Sora V2 is such a hyped up mouse is because this mouse is promising top of the line performance at a very, very low weight, probably one of the lowest we've seen this year on a solid shell mouse. This mouse is weighing in only at 39 grams. Now I went ahead and I already weighed this on my scale and it weighed in at 39.7 grams. So it is within spec. It does say plus minus two grams on the box. So you're expecting either 39 to run around the 41 range, but 39.7 is a very impressive weight for a mouse with no holes in the shell. I'm interested to see what they change on the inside in terms of weight cutting. Cause again, it is a solid base. There's no cutouts in the bottom and the entire shell is solid. So either this polycarbonate material they're making the shell out of is just insanely light or they did something on the inside to make it a lot lighter. So I'm very interested to see what they did on the inside. Now there have been some shape changes from the Sora, original Sora. This is a little more optimized for claw grip. So the back has been kind of shrunk in just a little bit to give it a little more of a higher hump as well as the sides have been shrunk just a little bit to make it a little more optimized for claw grip. Now, again, I have really big hands. This thing looks like a toy in my hand, but this does fit very comfortably in my hand. I'll do a lot more of analysis of how it feels for other grip styles for the full review, of course, but for my big 7.5 by 5 inch hands, this does actually fit very comfortably for a claw grip. It does fill up the middle of my hand very well, which is actually quite impressive for a mouse this small. So that's really nice to see. It's not gonna have the same feeling of where it kind of fills up the middle of your hand as the X2V2 does, but it is still a very comfortable mouse. Now the coating on the mouse itself is actually pretty much identical to what we saw with the Sprime PM1. Again, same factory, same manufacturer. So that's to be expected, but it is pretty much exactly one for one. I don't feel a difference between the coating. The coating actually does feel pretty solid. I'm interested to see how it holds up in high moisture environments, but the coating does feel very solid so far. Now, in terms of sensors on the inside, this is using the 3395. Now this also does have a modified version that's going to have a competitive and a standard mode. And it is also ready for AK polling rate. Now there was a small mistake with Nijutsu's marketing here where they said the mouse is ready for AK polling rate, but this dongle is not capable of AK polling. It is only capable of 1K. I'm not sure if they're going to unlock AK or if it's going to be a separate dongle purchase. We saw the exact same thing with the dongle on the Sprime PM1, where both of these mice are capable of AK, but they're locked down to 1K with these dongles. So I'm assuming there's going to be an AK dongle at some point in the near future, or they're going to unlock 4K on this one. The PCB on this dongle does look like one that would support 4K polling rate, because it does look very similar to the PCB layout on the Pulsar 4K dongle and some of the other 4K dongles I have. I'll have to do some digging to see if this is actually capable of 4K, but I'll cover that more in the full review. Oh, I also should mention, this is also using a new Snappy Fire wireless tech. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same wireless tech we saw on the Sprime. I'm assuming it's a proprietary one, but it'll be interesting to see how they compare between the new, because these mice are so similar. It'll be interesting to see how their wireless tech performs against each other. Now, this mouse does also have a wireless-based software, which is nice to see. The Sprime has the same thing, and I'm actually really enjoying this new wave of wireless-based software, which is really cool to see, so that's nice to see as well. Now, in terms of the actual buttons themselves, side buttons feel really good. They do have a really good tension on them. They are a little harder to push than I expect for a side button, but they do feel pretty solid. Scroll wheel is a fairly heavy scroll, very like ratcheted though. You feel the scroll points very pronounced. Scroll wheel click is very, very heavy. Definitely one of the heavier I've seen for sure. And then the main clicks, the main clicks feel amazing. Now, one of the things I loved about the Sprime is the main clicks because they are Omron clicks. I just love the feeling on the on the clicks here. And this is using the same Omron click as well. However, they do feel a little different, which is very interesting. These feel a little heavier, but these feel a little lighter. Now that may just be the shell causing differences in the travel points, but they do feel very similar, but I do really like the feel of the Omrons on here. They feel very, very, very solid overall. But overall, the mouse does feel really nice. I have no complaints about it. Again, for this being such a small light mouse, I'm surprised it fits my hands so well. I'll definitely have to do some testing with fingertip because again, this mouse is so light. It literally feels like you're holding nothing. Like I'm pretty sure an egg would be heavier than this. Not going to lie. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go grab these speed skates here. I'm going to go ahead and install these on my Sora V2. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some testing in Kovacs to see how it performs. So let me go do that. And I'll be right back in a couple minutes. Now, I will say right off the bat, this mouse is definitely very, very light. So much so where this is definitely going to take some time for me to get accustomed to this weight because this weight is so light. I don't even feel like I'm actually moving anything per se. So that's going to take some adjustment. The shape does feel good for claw grip, but I think it's just a little bit too small for my hands or maybe I need a little more time on it to get used to it. But there is just, it does, I guess, 
give a little bit of cramping more towards my pinky and ring finger just because it is a little less aggressive on this side of the shell. It does feel significantly better if I'm using the Carpio G2.0 to do kind of like a hybridized like finger claw grip where I have the Carpio supporting my wrists here and then I have my fingers here just to kind of move around. It does feel a lot better with that, but I'll have to do some testing for both claw grip and fingertip grip. This mouse is definitely way too small for palm. I mean, obviously, I mean, look at my hands, but with other hand sizes, it may be a little more usable, but this mouse definitely feels to me most best as a fingertip or like hybrid claw mouse, I guess you could say. But in terms of performance though, the mouse does feel pretty solid. I will say the actuation weight is so low on the clicks. I do find myself sometimes actuating the right click whenever I move across the pad, but that's because of my bigger hands. That may not be on every, every but that's mainly just me. But overall, the mouse does feel very solid. I'm very interested to see how it performs over more long-term testing, because this is a very, very interesting mouse. Again, it just, the weight is just something so jarring. I'm just gonna have to get accustomed to, because it definitely is not something I'm used to. I'll have to pair it with maybe a slower pad. I know the Neptune may be a little too fast, so that may be partially why it feels so hard for me to kind of control it while I'm straining so much. But I think that's more just my setup right now. I'm pretty sure this will feel a lot better with a much more controlled pad, but we'll see how that fares over testing. That is going to be everything for my unboxing and first impressions of the Ninjutsu Sora V2. Thank you again very much then for sending this out for review. I greatly appreciate it. I'm very excited to test this mouse out and see how it handles over testing. So, so stay tuned for a full review of the Sora V2 coming in maybe a month or so once I have some time to do some testing. I will also, of course, be doing a full teardown of this mouse as I always do, because I'm very, very interested to see what the internal components are on this and see how they got this mouse so light because they must have done something to the inside so i'm interested to see how it fares off that but i will cover all that more in the full teardown video and full review coming in a couple weeks thank you very much again for watching i greatly appreciate it if you enjoyed the video and you want to stick around for the full reviews and the teardowns be sure to get subscribed to the channel and if you'd like to support the channel you can always become a channel member channel members will have their name shouted out at the end of videos i don't have any currently right now but in future videos your name will be shouted out in the end credits if you want to see your name in my video you can go ahead and become a member on the channel and support everything that's happening here but that is everything for today again thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.